I have this kind of love-hate relationship with magnetism because on the one hand it's super interesting and it's keeping us from being slowly fried into extinction, but on the other hand it's just too complicated to understand. Sorry. You're still here. I knew I liked you. There's some truth to what I said there. Um, magnetism is keeping us from dying, and it's also two, sometimes three, difficult to understand, but that shouldn't stop us from appreciating how weird and interesting it is, and how everywhere it is. Seriously, from holding this microphone onto my shirt, to electrical wiring, to the ground beneath your feet, to bird faces, let's talk magnetism. But we'll do it after a little music break. If you've ever sat down in a comfortable place and played with magnets, then the first thing you probably realize is that you've just stumbled into like non-stop entertainment that could last literal days. The second thing that you probably realized is that sometimes they pull together, and other times they push each other apart. And that all has to do with poles. North Pole, South Pole, just like the Earth, but we're not ready for that yet. Every magnet has a North and South Pole. North Poles are attracted to South Poles, but North Poles repel other North Poles, and South Poles repel other South Poles. An easy, confusion-free way to remember that is that magnets like staring at butts, not faces. You stick two magnets together and pull them apart and feel a little bit of a pull. That is a magnetic field in action. What happens when you only have one magnet? It has a North Pole and a South Pole, and it turns out that it stares at its own butt. A single magnet will produce a magnetic field that kind of wraps around itself with the magnetic field lines coming out of the North Pole and going back into the South Pole, making that kind of bizarre shape. But do you actually want to know what a magnetic field is? I, I lost a bit of my mind trying to find a satisfying answer to that question, and I still don't have one to share. But even without knowing all of the details about what makes a magnetic field a magnetic field, we can still appreciate another weird one. You've probably heard the word electromagnetism before, and that word kind of hints at some connection between electricity and magnetism, and what I found really interesting to learn more about is just how connected those two things are. They're not just related, they're like conjoined twins. Basically, think where there is electricity, there is magnetism. Let's take a wire of some description. If you run electricity through the wire, let's say that the current is moving in the direction of my thumb. What's going to happen, believe it or not, there's a mosquito on me, it's, it's bug season, there will be a magnetic field that wraps itself all the way around the wire in a circle. You've got this circular magnetic field. Sounds completely made up to me. But this was first pointed out just over 200 years ago by a guy called Hans when he realized that some electrical wiring was messing with a compass that was on his desk. And this thing that I was doing, this is actually a real physics thing. This is called the first right-hand rule. If the current goes this way, the magnetic field goes in the direction of your fingers. And that circular magnetic field isn't particularly useful. But we can make it useful by turning it into this. Then, the part of the magnetic field that's wrapping around the wire and going through the middle of the coil, all of that is going to kind of funnel together and go all the way through the coil and then go around and essentially generate the exact same shaped magnetic field that you get with a permanent magnet. And we just independently invented the electromagnet. Want to invent something else? All right. Stick with me. Let's pretend that these are really big permanent magnets. They're, they're not. Um, but pretend. If I were to set these down like this, but keep them apart, you would have a magnetic field going from the north pole of this one into the south pole of this one. You don't have to use permanent magnets, by the way. Now that you're an expert in electromagnet coils, you can make your magnetic field however you like. If I then take a piece of wire and gently place it inside the magnetic field, nothing interesting happens. But if I were to run electricity through the wire and we have a current that goes this way, the wire will move. 
don't ask me why. It's just something the universe does. You can get things like speakers that turn electrical signals into vibrations that eventually you perceive um, as sound. But we can make this even weirder. Instead of just having one magnetic field that moves it, what if you then had another magnetic field that kind of caught the wire and continued to move it, and then another one, and then another one, and you arrange all of these magnetic fields in a big circle, you could get something that goes around and around and around and around, and if you hook everything up just the right way, you've invented the electric motor. That's one sec. That's how things like drills work. But the craziest thing to me about all of this is that the same theory works backward. Stay. If instead you're starting with motion, you can move a wire through a magnetic field and actually generate a voltage across it. And that is how generators work. Every electric motor is just a generator being played backwards and every electric generator is just an electric motor being played backwards. And I know what you're thinking. Does that mean that every wind turbine is really just a giant fan being used in reverse? Yeah. And hey, look, look at me for a second. Look at me. That is a wind turbine, not a windmill. I don't want to catch you making that mistake. Now, electromagnetism isn't strictly reserved for wires, and that's a very good thing if you happen to be alive and on Earth. And the reason for that is the sun. We have this kind of complicated relationship with the sun because even though it's keeping us alive, it's also trying very, very hard to kill us. But the Earth keeps us alive using a magnetic field. Allow me to explain. The sun produces more than just light and it's constantly spewing out an absolutely devastating amount of charged particles, a phenomenon poetically named solar wind. These charged particles don't play nice with things like DNA, and if we were to get hit with all of them, it would also probably strip away most if not all of the Earth's atmosphere, leaving us nothing to breathe. But the Earth is able to deflect away most of these charged particles using a magnetic field, keeping us safe, allowing life on Earth to continue. But where does that magnetic field come from? Well, it kind of comes from the ground beneath your feet. Beneath the surface, it's actually a lot of goopy flowing around stuff. There's a lot of melted metal just sloshing around in there. <coughs> it's bug season. <coughs> and this sloshing around of melted metal is moving around charged particles in what is basically a giant, messy, sloppy, flow of electricity. And as we know, where there's electricity, there is magnetism. And the Earth generates a giant magnetic field around itself. And apparently, the magnetic North Pole has been known to flip places with the magnetic South Pole. And that could happen very suddenly and very soon, which is how geologists say that it's a process that takes hundreds, if not thousands of years, and it could happen sometime in the next 10,000 years. And it's kind of cool that the Earth is just a big magnet. But shouldn't that mean that it would even interact with these little magnets that I have here? Like, shouldn't the North Pole of these magnets be attracted to the South Pole of the Earth? It turns out they do. Oh, it actually worked pretty well just now. For more interesting results, you can put your magnets on something that floats on water and watch them go. And yes, in case you were wondering, this kind of thing is exactly what compasses are based off of and what makes them work. Can you imagine having a compass built into your face? Well, birds can. Turns out birds have been making use of the Earth's magnetic field for navigation, and they've been doing it since before I even started this sentence. There are a couple competing theories for how exactly they do it. One theory has to do with a protein that exists in the bird's eye, that depending on how that protein is oriented inside of a magnetic field seems to impact the amount of blue light that the bird perceives. But another theory has to do with a naturally occurring magnetic magnetic mineral called magnetite. Magnetite has been found in trace amounts inside of birds' beaks, and some believe that based off of how the magnetite is trying to interact with the Earth's magnetic fields, that the birds may be able to feel that and align themselves for very precise navigation. Migratory birds have been known to travel thousands of kilometers either way twice a year and end up in the exact same destination year over year 
which is remarkable navigation considering sometimes I can't even find my way around my own hometown without a GPS. Anyway, you may be able to guess this is far from the entire story about magnets and magnetism and everywhere that it exists. This video really just scratches the surface and I don't know much about magnetism beyond the surface that I have scratched. So with that being said, that is all that I had for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.